Hey folks, Steve here, and we're talking Samson and Delilah. Uh, this is the official uh, Samson Delilah poster with the tagline, True Love. So uh, this is a, a very rare Australian film for a number of reasons, but um, most of all, it's a love story. And um, if Australian films that you've seen tell you anything, it's you know it's not really a cinema about love like you know there are some films about love but um often things get in the way of uh, people hooking up getting together and just having a a good time um you know wherever they want to go and have that good time but uh, Samson and Delilah is a love story of sorts and that's how the poster wants to announce the film now you may be thinking. Steve, this place is terrible. You don't even have the name of the actors. And um, uh, the name of the actors would be Rowan McNamara and Marissa Gibson. And uh, you're probably thinking, hey, Steve, I've never heard of those actors. Who are these people? Well, they are. They're not actors. They're, um, they're sort of plucked from the community that the film is set. Um, it's not, a, it's not a, a, a social realist film. Samson and Delilah. Um, there's something very. Um, I mean, I know Australian films. Some of them are social realist films, but by and large, when you think about Australian cinema, what you're thinking about is a certain type of Australian cinema, and it's very kind of um, stagey, very theatrical. And there's something of that in this film as well, where. The characters are essentially performing ideas of themselves and performing ideas for other people. The Australian cinema is often actually about people putting on performances for other people, whatever those performances are. Think of, say, Shine or even like a film like Chopper, where, you know, Chopper's playing different ideas of himself. There's many, many films um, that come to mind when you think of that. But this film... Although it is kind of a social realist film, it's not really a social realist film. It is very much set in that um, heightened self-aware idea of, of 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 the cinema and what Australian cinema does really um, really well and what it's really interested in doing. Now, um, now something that irritates me, and it's here on this poster. And I don't know why they do it. They just do it to piss me off. It's when, right, they'll put, like, the name of things, of people, right, and they don't have them next to the person that it is. So it says, the title, Samson and Delilah. You can see that Delilah is next to Samson and Samson's next to Delilah. It's very confusing. If you haven't seen the film, you go into the film thinking, okay, the female here, of the uh, of the picture must be Samson, and the male of the picture with facial hair is it must be Delilah. So they're they're obviously playing around with the historical um you know they're not genderizing names, and um so you, you might go in thinking it's a different film than what you're seeing. Well, it's just a confusing poster because um Delilah is the female and Samson is the male. I know it's not a big thing. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to sort of get, you know, all caught up in, in that. But it's just annoying. I find it very annoying. Anyway, I like this poster a lot. Um, uh, Delilah staring at the lens. Samson not staring at the lens. Or into the lens, I suppose. That's sort of at and into, isn't it? Anyway, uh, make of that what you will. What's that saying about the uh, the film on display? Anyway, I like, uh, I like the poster because I like, um, I like the setting. I think it's an interesting setting in the background, um, which we see. And the film was uh, were directed and shot, as in cinema photography shot, by Warwick Thornton, who is, um, he, he's, he's done cinema photography on a number of films, including The Sapphires. And uh, there was a rumour that he sort of, um, he might have done a little bit of directing of that film, The Sapphires. I mean, I, you know, I don't want to... Uh, Add weight to um, you know disrespecting people who were 
credited on that film as the director, but I just heard that uh, Warwick Thornton, did, you know, had more of a role than just uh, shooting the film, which um, might be something to think about. The reason I'm ra raising uh, Warwick Thornton here as cinematography, cin cinema photographer of the film is because he is just masterful. If I ever get around to making a movie, uh, not that I really have one, you know, all set up and ready to go, but if I do, Warwick Thornton is going to be my director of photography. Because as you'll see in this film, he takes very um, ugly kind of settings. Uh, and he just he just has this beautiful eye for, for finding something really interesting about them. And the film is, it looks beautiful. It looks fantastic. Right? There's something really, really stunning about this film um, in the way it looks. It's a big film experience, this one. It has to be seen on the big screen. If you're not watching Samson and Delilah on the big screen, you're missing out on something, right? The first time I saw this film, I saw it on a small screen. I thought it was all right. Um, didn't think much of it. And then I saw it on the big screen, and holy mackerel, I thought, now that is a piece of cinema. It looked fantastic. And that's the thing about the film. It's the it's a film about the cinema. You know, the way things are shot and the way that music, you know, plays with the way that things are shot. And, you know, you know, it's just it's it looks remarkable. And his use of the camera and the use of the cutting and everything about it is just fantastic. And that's what the film is about. You know, the film is a piece of cinema, and it's such a beautifully constructed and composed um, uh, film that it, you know, it really does have to be seen on the big screen. Because if you're not seeing the big screen, you're kind of losing all of that. I'm just going to say that there right now. Okay, move on, shall we? Um, Samson Delilah, of course, is a, a play on um, the biblical um, Cecil B. DeMille. Well, I mean, you know, Samson Delilah existed before Cecil B. DeMille made it into a movie. Of um, there's, uh, there's Delilah with a knife. In a, um, it's not. It's not. It doesn't look like it's going to go well, does it? Anyway, um, what's interesting about uh, Samson and Delilah, you know, using that title, is across the film, you have all of these. This is Warwick Thornton's film. You have all of these um, Christian religious iconographic. Um, sort of pieces or artifacts, you know, like crosses and Bibles and things like this. And think about why that's there. Is it effective? What's actually going on with it? And think about characters' relationships with religion. What you don't often see in Australian cinema uh, is, is um, people really being drawn to religion. You know, it's not really a spiritual cinema. When you think of spiritual cinemas, Australian cinema is very secular. It's not really about the religious experience of the characters. And this film is certainly not a religious experience film, all right? It's not a spiritual film. But there is something about the iconography there. And um, could it be a resistance to, um, you know, what... Um, Certain indigenous Australians are being forced to do, you know, in that sort of following a, a, a sort of a, a white, um, a white line of inquiry. And um, I'll talk more about that um, uh, when I'm actually introducing the film. All right, this is a, this is a German poster, but you'll be pleased to know it's got the name of the director down the bottom, written and directed by Warwick Thornton, and it's got the name of the actors, the non-actor to actors. Rowan and Marissa are there and um, make it that poster. They look happy. And uh, is that the film that uh, you're going to see? I like the colours of that poster. So uh, yeah, that is the poster in Germany. Okay, now this is the uh, official synopsis of the film as the film people who um, made the film wanted you to um, think of the film when you're going in to the viewing. So, uh, Samson and Delilah's world is small, an isolated community in the desert. When tragedy strikes, they turn their backs on home and embark on a journey of survival. 
lost, unwanted, and alone, they discover that life isn't always fair, but love never judges. Now, what's interesting about that is because it's like, oh, okay, I, I get that. I, 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 I can watch that film. You know, it doesn't matter where I'm from in the world. Universal story. I'm with it. I'm ready to go. Deal me in. Let's go. Now, if I was to ask a lot of people, um, certainly a lot of Australians, what the film is about, you know, you know, what's the synopsis of the film, you know, they might give me um, a very, well, it's about, you know, um, the social mores, the problems of Indigenous rural communities, um, you know, the, the fact of, um, you know, white government really not, um, ex you know, really doing enough to incorporate Indigenous communities, um, you know, into broader, the broader social context of Australia, you know, it was just going on like that, right? And the point of this synopsis and the point of what Warwick Thornton is wanting to do is he's saying, well, yeah, that's all there, all the Indigenous um, social issues. But the film within that, that's just kind of the backdrop, within that is about these two characters and this this journey of survival for both of them. Both of them go through a hell of a a hell of a, a journey across the film, but they have each other, and it's really interesting the way um, that the film kind of plays around with that. So, I think that's interesting the way that the film sets up, and um, you know what's actually going on. The fact, why the film wants you to read it in a particular way, and of course the film did win at um, at Cannes on um, Camera d'Or, which is the the uh, the award for best, um, sort of best debut film by director. So uh, Warwick Thornton uh, won that. Now, Dave Calhoun, because, uh, you know, I want to talk about the way that the film was received, both uh, nationally and internationally, and the, um, the problems around that. But Dave, I like Dave a lot. Never met the guy. Uh, writes for Time Out in the UK. And I think this, he just gets it with what's actually going on. And I, I think he reads it. And the problem with the film like Samson Delilah is you can start to put your own views and your own baggage onto the reading of the film, which often is not there. I think the film you know, underwent great um, scrutiny and great um, critiquing by people who really, um, you know, were not watching the film that was actually on display. They were watching a different film. Now, this is what Dave says. The director plays a clever game with sympathy. He brings us closer and closer to Samson and Delilah, but doesn't demand that we feel sorry for them. It's a smart approach that means we never feel manipulated, just guided by a sensitive and fearless commentator, unafraid of revealing ugliness on all sides of the social divide. But who also believes that love can endure most hardships? Now, what I like about that is because he doesn't just look at the the negative aspects of the world that, that, that Samson and Delilah are in, right? He's actually saying that, by and large, this is a, a very positive film about two people who just keep on keeping on, basically. And, um, you know, again, you know, the way that the environment um, plays with that. And what I really like is the way that he, D Dave, um, talks about um, how Warwick Thornton plays with our sympathy, but he never overdoes it. He never overcooks it. And I think that's very interesting, especially when you compare this film to um, other films like, say, A Shine, you know, which was... Um, critically, a lot of people had a, a real problem with the way that that film was directed. Um, and I think it's very interesting to, say, compare this film to something like Shine. I think Warwick Thornton is a, a terrific director. And, um, he, you know, he gets really, really incredible um, performances out of his two actors. All right. Now, uh, Samson and Delilah did pretty well at the box office. Um, it, of course, it, it's, it, you know, it did really well at the uh, the AFI Awards, which I think at the time would be renamed to Actor Awards. It, it made three million, 
at the Australian box office, which is pretty good if you look at uh, you know other films like Romper Stomper. You know, Romper Stomper made three million, it was you know, pretty much almost the same amount of money um, as Romper Stomper. Made it uh, about thirteen more dollars than Romper Stomper. Um, the Summer of Us, starring Rusty Crow, sort of in his height of his Australian time. And uh, The Delinquents, I don't know if you've seen The Delinquents, starring a, a young and a wannabe superstar actress in the mould of Nicole Kidman. Not Nicole Kidman, Kylie Minogue. Um, and the film, uh, you know, they were hoping the film was going to do a lot more. Anyway, the point is, Sam's and Delilah, for what it is, very small film. Um, and at the time, Australians had real issues with like actually paying money to see Indigenous stories. Like that's changed the last couple of years. But during this time, it was really, really difficult in um, actually convincing Australians to actually go along and see films about Indigenous Australians. So, um, you know, the fact that it made three million, I think is a pretty good return for a film like this. Now, um, I just want to. I actually want to look at um, some reviews, but also um, the sort of you know audience responses to the film and the problems around that. Now, um, by Warwick Thornton really winning the camera door, it does put him in the company of sort of other um, international directors. So um, here, the film was not celebrated as an Indigenous Australian film, but as a global love story. And if you actually got looking at what um, you know, international, um, well, I don't know if you call them bloggers. What do you call someone who writes comments on the internet movie database? I suppose you just write them a commenter, commentator, or something. Well, anyway, the people who write comments to stuff. Um, now, Dave goes boating. Who's a, he's been a member of the Internet Movie Database since 2005. He thought it was fantastic, exciting news. This is um, this is responding to the the Khan win. For those who don't know, this puts him in the company of Jim Jamoosh. Um, an incredible achievement, having seen the film last night. A well deserved one. So Dave goes boating. He's very happy. He's very happy with the film winning. He's very happy with the film and. Uh, you know, Dave goes boating, should be doing the lecture, because he is just doing what I am attempting to do here, which is say saying that the film wants to be seen within a particular type of world cinema, not necessarily Australian cinema, right? It's just, you know, it happens to be a story about um, Australian cinema, but its appeal is far more global, right? And... Um, yeah. Now, now Dave goes boating. He does. Uh, he this is another. This is another thing. Um, in response to um, this comment, I'd be interested to see if a, a Khan's award could result in. Then they wrote gasp, exclamation mark. Wider distribution for an Australian film in its domestic market in two thousand and nine. I don't remember whether it helped something like Ten Canoes. Well, it did help uh, something like Ten Canoes. Ten Canoes, if you looked at the the last slide, did better than uh, this slide. And, um, anyway, Dave Goes Boating, he responded. Ten Canoes did okay through Dandy. Jeez, Dave Goes Boating really knows a lot about... Uh, who are you, Dave Goes Boating? If you're listening, write to me. Ten Canoes did okay through Dendy, if I recall correctly. Although, was that actually an award winner? Question mark. I know it got selected in the uncertain regard category, but can't recall it winning anything. I really think it's shameful that Dendi, so Dendi is a distribution company if you haven't picked up on that. I think it's shameful that Dendi in Canberra has refused to show Samson and Delilah. I had to go to Greater Union. Having said that, I guess they might yet pick it up in light of the recent award win. Well, thank you, Dave Goes Boating, for yet another very, very interesting and insightful comment about um, where this film played and where would be the best place for the film to play. And um, Because the film, um, if it didn't premiere 
on like the ABC TV. It played on the ABC TV really, really early on, and that's where I initially saw it. And uh, you know, when I saw it, I thought, "Oh, it's all right. No, nothing. Uh, you know, nothing great." It's not like if I was ever teaching a course in Australian cinema, I'd want to play it. And then here I am, after seeing it on the big screen, and thinking, yes, I want to give my students the experience of seeing this film on the big screen. Because it's really good. Anyway, um, you know, should this film be playing at the multiplexes? And, uh, you know, that's what uh, Dave Goes Boating is sort of uh, saying, that the only place it was playing for a while was the multiplexes. And is that the right place for it, Dendi being a sort of a smaller independent cinema chain. So have a think about that. Um, when you, when we, you know, we're thinking about it, films, Australian films can certainly be lost in the multiplex cinema. And if you go in the multiplex and you're paying over you know, 25 bucks and your large type of popcorn and your extra sized Coke and all of that, and you go in and you watch Samson Delilah, like, you know, are you expecting a certain kind of film from the multiplex? And um, would the multiplex audience be willing to go along with a, a film like Samson Delilah, which isn't heavy on dialogue, you know, which asks you a lot as an audience member to really engage with it as a piece of cinema? Thanks, Days Goes Boating. I hope to hear from you. Interesting comments. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to see what else Dave Goes Boating has said about stuff because um, you know, he's really, really seems to be, he really seems to know his stuff. Okay, now, uh, like I was saying, does mainstream release hurt niche films? And does it give it an appropriate context? Now, festivals in Australia, they operate on the border between mainstream and niche, and they often are a good space for those films. And saying that, what, what is the right place for um, Samson Delilah? But before answering that, how do we categorize Samson Delilah? Like, is it a mainstream film? Is it a niche film? Is it, you know, you know, what, what, what is it? Independent film. Um, and, um, th I mean, the problem with Samson Delilah with the reviews that it received is it's too often misread as a social problem, indigenous film. Like that's what the film is. What's the film? Social problem, indigenous film. And people really didn't want to see that. You know, the thing about Australians, right? Unlike, say, British cinema, British cinema loves its social realism, all right? British people love to go and see how fucked up their country is, how fucked up they are, you know, as people, how messed up they are and their history is. Australians don't really care for that, you know. Um, Australians want to see, you know, Australians want to see Baz Luhrmann in full flight doing Baz stuff. Now, um, Samson Delilah is, I mean, you know, of course, social, social problems are there and, you know, it is a film that is an Indigenous film, of course. But the way you have to actually read the film to really get the film is to think about its cinema, what it's actually doing cinematically and the way that it, it seems so atypical to many other Australian films. Firstly, very little dialogue. When you think of Australian films, heavy on dialogue. Big time dialogue, a lot of dialogue, a lot of talking. You know, it's, it's that theatrical thing that's going on with these films. All right? So, Australian films, heavy on dialogue, Samson Delilah, you know, you know very little dialogue, right? Um, the soundscape, beautiful. Oh, beautiful film with a soundscape. And this film has often been, um, not often, but some people, some smart people, have actually referred to this as a kind of a musical in the way that music is being used to actually express ideas um, for the characters. And uh, there's all this Latino music in the film. And if you like Latino music, you're going to love Samson and Delilah. It's fantastic. And uh, who doesn't but like a bit of Latino music? Um, and it's also a love story, which again is, um, you know, very atypical for Australian films. So although the film is like, you know, doing all this stuff like, um, uh, you know, politically or, or topically, probably more than politically about Australia, it's actually um, it's actually unlike, you know, your average Australian film. Okay, now, um, more comments. Um, Dave Goes Bodie has left us. And uh, the, the, the headline for this um, chain was, I so wanted to like this film. Now, of course, we know where we're going, don't we? Um, 
and uh, so we've got um, we've got a, a conversation happening between um, a few um, and Seymour three is um, he, Seymour three liked the film. I, I found the entire film engrossing. He said it comes across as very real and true but so very remote from my experience and existence right here in the same country. I understand, though, the story and characters may not have been so captivating in this way of life was really familiar to the viewer. But for a while, for, sorry, for a while, for a white city fella who has lived a fairly sheltered life, the film was a real eye-opener. Depressing and shocking, hopeful and funny, horrible beautiful i loved it and i'm so glad it exists geez um that's not patronizing is it um now um you know i mean like you know like you know where do i start um with that like seymour um you know very odd response really is um you know to say but so remote from my experience and existence right here in the same country because Clearly, you know, Australia is a big place and there are many different parts of Australia, many different stories in Australia. And don't you actually go to Australian cinema to see different points of view? <coughs> Just a question. Um, but Celeste X. Now, I see more three doesn't have a, uh, a uh, picture. But Celeste X, sorry, Celeste underscore X does. And, uh, you know, she seems quite friendly. But um, she, she didn't like the film. I'm surprised you found this movie boring and tedious. Of course, it was a slow moving movie. But my experience of it was far from boring. All right, Celeste, we're with you right now. Okay. I think this is an accurate yet somber portrayal of growing up in a small indigenous community and the hardships they face. I think the lack of dialogue for the most part of the movie contributed to this greatly because it reinforced how isolated these communities are not just from other Australians, but within their own communities also. Um, correct, I would say. I'm, you know, I'm with Celeste. I think uh, uh, I'm with um, now. Then, um, then we then we get another response by. Uh, uh, I, I, can't, I can't even make out what that uh, what that name is. Um, anyway, he said, I totally agree with your view that this film just failed. I work for Department of Community Services and see plenty of like, pl plenty of like children day in, day out. Okay, that, that, I'm reading it, all right? This is not my bad reading. It's um, grammatically, you know, all messy. I hear their stories. I share parts of their lives. Jeez, he's got big tickets for himself, you know. Uh, I study psychology too, and in the first year we watched documentaries about the same story this film so horribly failed to tell. What I find funny is that the cheaply made documentary was so much more engaging than this film. Right. Ha ha, ironically, it gave me and my friends so much ammunition for criticism that I think it was well worth the suffering just for the comedic relief at the end. There's more. I'm sorry, but I have just seen other films portraying a similar message and doing a much better job. Well, um, seriously, I mean, he, he really, um, he works for the Department of Community Services. He shouldn't be. <laughs> with that attitude and uh you know again i mean what all these um what all these comments tell us is that they're so so directly obsessed with the idea of the way that the the film depicts its the social topical aspects that we never really get we never really get to what it's doing cinematically. And I, I, I have real problems with that because you're kind of missing out on what the film is doing. And, um, you know, the final comment that, you know, it, cheaply made documentaries are more engaging. Well, that's just bullshit, you know, just complete bullshit. Um, 
This is just not true. And um, Warwick Thornton is a proper filmmaker. Anyway, we get more. Um, Stars 2. Okay. Um, he says, oh, you know, the, the, the title of this one is uh, Movies are for Entertainment. Well, that is what I thought anyway, ec on the space exclamation mark. Why would you pay big bucks to go and see such a dreary, offensive, totally boring film? Space, question mark. Is he doing that for, um like, effect? The space, and then, you know, exclamation mark. Anyway. The camera work was so bad that at two points in the middle of the film, I thought it was the end. To have a totally blank screen for well over 30 seconds is not good filmmaking. Yes, yeah, some people have a bad hand in life. These people have a bad deal from their families. So what are we supposed to do about that? The beating up scenes were disgusting. No wonder these poor children grew up like they do. It was not even good enough to have been produced by high school students as an end of term project. Well, excuse me, right? And I mean, I don't want to offend any high school students and their end of term projects. But if any high school student is bringing in films like Samson and Delilah, give them 100% and give them a bag of money to make Australian films. You know what I'm saying? Like, seriously. Star 2. You, no, okay, Star 2. I don't know if that is your dog in the picture, right? Cute dog. Because you should be putting a picture of your dog because you're obviously a dickhead. And, um, you know, obviously a very entitled dickhead who thinks that, uh, you know, oh, you, you saw a beating up scene, it was disgusting. Well, maybe, you know, sometimes in life there's bad shit that goes down and the, the film is, you know, putting you in their world um, for a little while over. And, you know, a totally blank screen for well over 30 seconds is, you know, is not good filmmaking. Oh, I'm sorry, Star 2, are you telling us now that, you know, there are particular rules on what a good film is and what a good film isn't? <sighs> Star two. Uh, he, he craps on more. Um, so, uh, here's what he said. Um, this is not a movie. It should be classed as a documentary. Yeah, well, that was the problem with the last, um, the, you know, the last page I was reading. I have spoken to friends and acquaintances who are Aboriginal, right? Um, and not one of them had a good word to say about it. It shows only the bad side of their life with nothing good in it at all. Well, you see, go back to Dave's review from the time out. He says, no, it's a very positive film. All you, in scare quotes here, all you wannabe critics are just that. Join the majority of moviegoers who are just there to enjoy movies and movie making that is well done. Whew. Well, I mean, I don't know why, you know, like a film like this, you know, like, you, you know what he's saying? He's basically saying is, give me escapist bullshit that doesn't mean anything to my life, right? So he's essentially what he's saying is that film isn't really art. It's just, it's just to kill some time. It's a horrible way of thinking about it. Anyway, stars two. Um... I mean, I mean, what can I say about that? Apart from that you're a dickhead. That's all I can say. Because, you know, what you're saying is just crap. And this thing, it should be classed as document. I mean, this is the interesting thing about the film. Like, it's actually using social, contemporary, topical problems. It's actually using characters who are from that world. You know, right? But it's not documentary. Like, it's, it's so beautifully cinematic. You know, it's clearly not documentary. And, um, yeah, anyway, uh, don't get me started on this. Okay, now, what happens, like Stars 2, if the viewer is not sympathetic to Indigenous issues, right? They just go on these fucking rants on social media, just banging on about nothing, calling the film not a film, a documentary. Like, another point, documentaries are films! You know what I'm saying? Would these viewers remain if the film was seen at a festival or event screenings? So, would these views I remain if the film was seen at a festival or event screenings? Cast and crew acting as a springboard for conversation about the film. What I'm saying is, 
does Samson Delilah need like a context where you've actually got um, people from the film just like saying, I'm going to introduce the film, I want you to think about the film in a certain way, you know, like you would with a film course, and then at the end, you know, having a conversation about the film. Does a like, film like Samson Delilah need that? And is that a problem if a film needs like an introduction, or is that actually okay? You know, it's just a type of film. And um, are like, you know, television broadcasts you know, or private DVD viewings hurting the film. Like, if you're, if you're actually losing all of the cinema, are you actually not understanding the film? And then, you know, you're having these really negative attitudes to the film. You know, I want Stars 2 to tell me how he watched the film. I bet he didn't pay for it. I bet you a million dollars. German reception. Uh, the film was not dubbed into Germany, uh, into the German language, which um, you may not have thought about, but most Australian films, uh, say in Germany, uh, and, you know, the accent isn't heard because they're overdubbed. No accent. So, um, but uh, that didn't happen with uh, Samson's Delight for a number of reasons. Um, well, the, the, the film, the filmmakers actually said they didn't want it dubbed, and because uh, there's so little dialogue, the, they they sort of thought it was unnecessary, so it was subtitled. Um, now the accent does put it, the film into a relatable context, which I think is uh, really important. And the thing about sort of internationalizing Australian films, if you take like an Australian film and you overdub it, it kind of puts the film into a, a, a context of that country that's being overdubbed, you would think. And this film didn't do that. So it, it does sort of seem very much... Um, Part of a different world. Now, uh, as the reading says for this week, German audiences were inclined to treat Samson and Delilah as a social problem film. And um, they were kind of relating it to other social problem films from Germany, which are, you know, very, very interesting. The film has been interpreted according to cultural codes familiar to the, to the respondent, a political movie. So they'll call it a political movie, not a love story. And... Um, then you start to think about, oh, other, you know, political Australian films like Balibo, you know, is Balibo and Samson Delilah, do they have similarities? They're both political films. And how is this film political or not political? And uh, they didn't see it as a love story. Do you see Samson and Delilah as a love story? And uh, very interested to talk to you about that. Now, Australian films, uh, especially Aboriginal films, entering the European market are constrained not only by prizes and reviews, but also proper comprehension of cultural codes on the side of European audiences. And what I mean by that is, you know, people look at particular codes or stereotypes or, you know, whatever, and actually put them in a relatable context. And um, I think that's, that's, that's kind of interesting with something like Samson and Delilah is where are the cultural codes? Like, you know, Crocodile Dundee, right? Mick, Paul Hogan, you know, drinks beer, talks in that ocker Aussie blokey kind of way, wrestles crocodiles, you know, very easy to put that in comprehensive cultural codes. But Samson and Delilah, you don't actually have any of that. So again, it's very, very difficult. And that asks the question, you know, how do these characters relate to other films, you know, other Australian films, other Australian characters? Is Samson like a, you know, an, an Aussie bloke like other Aussie blokes that we've um, seen in the course? And also Delilah, because uh, the film really shouldn't be called Samson's Delilah. It should be called Delilah and Samson, because the film is really about Delilah. She is the film. And um, um, the, the female actor, Marissa Gibson, Fantastic. Film's worth seeing just for her great performance. And uh, film, uh, the question I'm asking here is um, how does the film play widely and TV without the cultural codes being lost? We're in how should the film play festival. See, at a festival, you're actually getting someone introduced in the film and you're often having a Q&A. Event screenings. You know, think of Robert Connolly and his event screening idea. Um, you know, should the film play um, with the event screenings? National cinema relies on culturally specific cliches. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Crocodile Dundee is a film about cliches. Megan Morris, who uh, writes for Australian cinema, 
often. Uh, she writes, cultural codes can be either lost or successfully conveyed when films transcend national boundaries, right? So she's sort of saying if a cultural code is lost, it can become really problematic. And a film like The Sapphires, which did really well, you know, another Indigenous film, you think about that film, why does that film do so well? Well, it's actually, it's really easy to see that film within a broader global cinema. Like it's a musical, it's all about soul music. You know, Samson Delilah, it's a more difficult viewing because it's harder to put it in a context. Like even Australians who have seen a number of, you know, Indigenous films find Samson Delilah a film unlike those other films. Um, final thought, how do you define the film, all right? So, like, is it a genre film? Is it a love story? Is it what, if it is a love story, how is it a love story like other love stories? How is music used? Does that remind you of other films? Um, how does this film sit within this course? You know, what other films um, does it relate to, if any? So think about that. Um, is or how is it like other films? And then... It, the thing about the film, you know, like I was saying earlier, is it's it's very performative in that Australian cinema way where characters are performing ideas of themselves. And it's, you know, when you think of this film as like, um, oh, this whole course is about breakouts, you know, breakout performances often for the actors. Now, at the time of recording this, right, the two actors have not gone on to, you know, have very lucrative international careers. That hasn't happened. But for the director, though, Warwick Thornton, I mean, he's he's actually, you know, he's been able to do other things and get other films up. And he's, you know, been able to launch his um, career on the basis of this film. But it's not like, you know, you, you may read some stuff on Samson and Delilah and it will be called sort of like social realism and all of this. And it, it kind of is, but it isn't. Um, it, it There is something very performative about what the, the film is asking certainly of the character of, of Samson. And even though they're not actors, right, and you don't, you're not going to see something like theatrical, like, you know, Jeffrey Rush or anything in the film, but there is something in the way that um, Warwick Thornton frames them and puts them in particular moments. And, uh, you know, the perfect example is the, the Samson dancing while Delilah is sitting in the car. It's just this beautiful moment that happens quite early in the film. And you'll know what I mean when you see it, that it's, you know, it, it, it's unlike um, what you think of the social realist films. Uh, locations, how the locations use. There's one problem I have with the film, right? And uh, for the most part, the film is kind of set in um, outback rural um, communities populated by indigenous Australians. And there's, there's one scene when Delilah trying to make a few bucks, she goes into town, um, which is populated by kind of white um, tourists. And I just felt, like, I don't know what you think, but I just felt that it the film overcooked itself, it overplayed its hand, and it almost lost its nerve because I didn't think the film was about that and then it's sort of forcing this thing onto us, which I didn't really think it worked. But it's very interesting in a, a shift in locations. So have a think about that. Um, how is Christian iconography used across the film? Uh, what resonance does the film have as an Australian film? And finally, how is this film about outsiders? Because this film is about outsiders like every other film we've seen is about outsiders. Like every Australian film is pretty much about outsiders. And how is the film actually about outsiders? And even like the casting of non-actors, you know, you're actually casting outsiders outsiders, like outsiders as far as, you know, they're not part of the filmmaking world, but they're kind of insiders because they're from the communities that the film is representing. So it's all kind of interesting. It's all about insider and outsider. Um, all right, I'm going to leave it there. And um, uh, uh, I hope you enjoy it. And um, uh, Jim Shembury, formerly of The Age, he said um, his review, five-star review, outstanding, extraordinary, skillfully understated, quietly powerful. That was his review. So, um, and I agree with all that. I think it's, it's an excellent film, um, which really needs to be seen on the big screen. And um, I'll be very interested to know uh, what you make of it and, um, you know, what you make of its cinema-ness, things like that. All right, uh, I'll leave it there. Um, 
I hope to see you all very soon. And enjoy yourself and um, just keep on doing whatever you're doing. Bye for now.